Welcome, and thank you for joining us for worship here at First Congregational United Church of Christ. If you've worshiped with us before, you know that we seek to be rooted in God's love, to be nourished on our spiritual journeys and growing as an inclusive presence in our community. You know, this spring season is always a busy time around church. Today, we offer some special music during worship, so we're glad you tuned in for us today. And maybe you've been joining us every week, or this is your first time. In any case, whether you are a seeker or believer, a person of faith or a person of no faith at all, whether you are joining us on your computer or tablet or smartphone, or you're watching on your 50-inch 4K UHD 7 Series Ultra HD Smart TV with HDR and Alexa compatibility, no matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Let's begin worship.
by the grace of God, we are called to worship. We gather in this strange way from our homes and offices, so scattered, yet united by this sacred time together. We worship God, who loves extravagantly, who rejoices infinitely, who creates unceasingly. How shall we receive the presence of God into our worship and into our hearts? Well, we begin with prayer. Let us pray. Still speaking, God, we listen for your spirit among us this morning. As we follow the, the ways of the risen Christ, may the melody of your love move us to a deeper understanding of how we embody your love. This morning and through this week, lead us on a faithful path. Amen.
We're featuring music this morning, so I thought I'd get out some handbells. <laughs> we have a lot of them, and they come in many different sizes. There's this little one here. And this is our biggest bell. It's really heavy. Now, <laughs> I am no expert in handbells, but I know a little bit. If you play one bell, it's pretty, but it's not very interesting musically. If you add another bell, well, that's sounding a little more like music, isn't it? It makes me think of how the church comes together as a community. One of us is good, but two makes it much more musical. And sometimes two together, well, they sound a bit strange. It's still good and musical, just different. Life is a little like that. I've asked our music minister, Kim Pace, to join me because we can add more bells into this. If you put a bunch of bells together, like these four, well, then it gets really interesting. And you can get kind of jazzy. Oh, yeah. It kind of reminds me of how all of us join as part of the church. And some of us, some of us are big and some are tiny, and many of us are, are somewhere in between. We each have our own sound, and it is good, and your own sound is precious. Right now, we cannot all be together here in the sanctuary, but it's like each of you has your own sound, your own ring, that is just yours alone. And, and maybe it's your smile. Maybe it is your laugh or the way you care for someone in your family or, or a, a friend you keep in touch with. You are like a bell ringing out God's love. And I imagine, I imagine God is listening to us even now and is able to combine all of our ringing, all those smiles and all the laughter and all those acts of love in one giant, wonderful symphony. So keep ringing. Keep caring. I think all these acts of love make God very happy. Let us be in prayer. God, who appreciates every note of music and every act of care, thank you for all the ways we can share your love, no matter where we are. Amen. church. Today I've been asked to give the invitation to offering. 
and I've chosen to give some reflections on my time in choir. I sang in a choir growing up. The only time I've stood on a stage and sung alone that my voice didn't betray my perfectionism was in a church as a part of a musical I performed in. I can't explain that lack of self-consciousness other than to say it was divine. I was always more comfortable as part of an ensemble where I could listen to the harmonies. I've said many times I wish I could sing the bass line. Alas, that was not my calling. <laughs> For many years I didn't sing in a choir because I turned my attention to psychology and raising children. But eventually, as I attended church services regularly, I began to feel drawn to sing in a choir again. Sometimes that came in the form of a person or two loudly saying that I should join. You know who you are. Other times, it was a whisper in my thoughts as I sat in the pew with my family. I've joined this choir twice. Once in 2007, when I was pregnant for the first time, and again, three years ago. I've sung under several different conductors as part of my uh, participation in this choir. I've learned something different from each one of them. In 2007, under Elmer, I was encouraged both verbally and non-verbally to lift my voice. From Parker, I learned the importance of humor. Sometimes I still say the one-liners and laugh to myself. I found the pieces that Joy chose to be beautiful and she reminded me of the importance of compassion and understanding. Joseph chose a variety of styles of music and I began to feel drawn to develop more as a musician. With Derek, I learned to shift with those around me quickly to a new style and I appreciate his willingness to learn with us as he has begun, as he began to shape our sound in a different way. I'm from you choir. I have learned in a deeper way the power of being in an interconnected group. I have experienced how each person present impacts the overall sound, feel, and performance of a piece. And what's more, I have connected with you not only as a singer, but as a member of a community that surrounds me now, even though we are physically distant. Singing with you all has created for me a special kind of communion. The connections with you all as a whole and which with each of you separately hold a special place in my heart. And to the congregation, as I lift my voice in praise, validation of struggle or acknowledgement of the divine, the importance of the act of singing has been made even more clear to me. So for every one of you listening, I, I give thanks for the ways you participate whether it be as a witness, a singer in the pew, the organist, or a fellow choir member. Our music ministries and other ways we serve would not be possible without our gifts. Thank you for the ways you support our church so that all these great acts of service may continue. As I heard Laura say once, give until it feels good. Thank you.
Let us pray. God, during this anxious time, remind us of your unwavering love and the nearness of your spirit. While we navigate this pandemic wilderness, open our hearts to new and unexpected ways to share your love. And God, we pray for your world that longs for hope and healing. During this season after Easter, may the promise of the empty tomb hold new and deeper meaning for us today. Help us to trust in the perseverance of your love and the comfort of your presence. We lift up a couple people by name who are in, in need of healing. For Jane Ingram and Connie Green, both of whom are healing from a broken shoulder, may you grant them a new sense of mobility and comfort. And for all those that we cannot name, but we know they need our prayers. We know they need your courage and your comfort. And we pray, we pray for new life for those who are sick and those who risk their lives to offer care, for those who are vulnerable and those who perform work so the rest of us can eat, for those who are consumed by fear and those who don't even have the resources to be safe. For all those public officials who must make decisions on the public's behalf for their well-being. We pray for all those generous souls who find creative ways to share your love. These are prayers that we offer out loud. We hold many more in our hearts. Some we cannot even put into words, but we offer them all to you in Jesus' name, who taught his followers to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm sitting in the chair here in the choir loft in the chancel, where I would usually sit if I were singing in choir some Sunday morning. Normally, and, and I know this spring has been way far from normal, but normally we would have special music on a Sunday in the springtime. Well, we do have special music for you today. On Palm Sunday in 2017, our choir offered the Requiem for the Living by Dan Forrest. They did a splendid job, backed by an excellent orchestra. We would like to share the Requiem for the Living with you today. Because we all know that music reaches parts of our souls that the spoken word cannot. There are five movements to this Requiem. Each lasts about eight minutes. We begin with the most gentle intrusion of God's mercy during the Kyrie. And then Solomon's will... Solomon's wisdom will be remembered as we race through vanities of vanities. All is vanity. We also plunge to the depths of Job's despair and his lament. Let the day perish wherein I was born. During the third movement, the Agnus Dei, we may find encouragement as we follow Jesus through the sufferings of Holy Week only to arrive at Easter resurrection so that we might be brought to new life in all its fullness. In his notes, the composer states that part of his inspiration for the fourth movement, the Sanctus, came from images from the Hubble Space Telescope. As the wonders of creation continue to unfold, that movement closes with the exuberance 
of the first Palm Sunday. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. The Requiem closes with the Lux Eterna, an image of light everlasting. Now, a Requiem Mass is usually offered for the dead, but in this last movement, we hear most clearly the composer's wish for this to be a Requiem for the living. And maybe that is what makes it so important to hear during this season when we get daily death counts on the news. In this last movement, you will hear the only English line in the entire piece. It is not a blessing for the dead, but for those who live. Come unto me, all ye who labor. Come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Otherwise, the Requiem is sung entirely in Latin. So we've provided the translation of each movement in our visuals. You can also download from our webpage the program notes, which include the English translation. So you can just pause this webcast and print it out if you wish. It's only a couple pages. Now, when the choir presented this work three years ago in our sanctuary here, we did record it. But our recording was not technically suitable for this webcast. I mean, there are parts that just cannot be heard. Well, fortunately, we found a recording that somewhat matches our choir and our orchestra. The visuals remain the same as our 2017 performance. I would like to thank the families of Diane Schultz and William Leffler, whose memorial gifts made our original presentation possible. If we hadn't done this work three years ago, you would not be hearing it this morning. Now, it's okay if we don't quite get all the words or even agree with all the theology. There is a hope. There is an expectation that beyond the images and words, the music itself is an expression of God's divine presence. Such moments can transform us. In this season of such uncertainty and isolation, may you find comfort and inspiration through this gift of music.
Beloved, we are, each of us, a part of the divine melody that flows forth from God. Sing your song, ring your bell, bang your drum, or be silent in your time. Know that God embraces all of us in love that is beyond measure. And may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. We have a few announcements about the life and mission of our church that we'd like to lift up, that we'd like to lift up for you now. Our church building remains closed until, until it's open <laughs> or until we realize it's, uh, it's safe to open again. And so we will be monitoring um, all of the suggestions and recommendations that are coming in from uh, a variety of different sources. Um, but we want to... I mean, it, <laughs> that was why I just follow the script. Well, just use it your words. Sense. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I didn't need to get into all that. We're going to be smart about it. How does that sound? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we want people to be safe, and we care about you. And so that's about it. And in the meantime, we'll get to the next line of the script. In the meantime, we are available by phone, email, Facebook, Zoom. Uh, you can contact uh, anybody in the church staff that you need to be in touch with. You can also call um, my cell phone or Reverend Nate's uh, flip phone. Do you have a flip phone? You still have a flip phone. It's so hard to text on that. (laughs) But it lasts for days without needing to plug it in. Very durable. So, yeah, so don't don't text Nate. Just call him. You can also uh, leave a message with one of our phones in the church office, and we will get back to you. We do offer daily opportunities to be connected. Uh, so please check out our web page, our Facebook page, our YouTube page. And uh, if you need any help with connecting online, please give us a call. We have resources to, to help you out w- with that. If you need help with anything else, please uh, let us know. Uh, uh, running an errand, getting groceries, uh, even a ride. We have a list of people who can help out with those things. We haven't had a lot of people ask yet for we have assistance. It. Nope. So... But everyone who's asked, we've been able to, Good. to serve. Good. And we do really want people to, to ask if there are things that come sure. up. Sure. Give us a call. That's how we're being church right now. So we really want to live that out. Uh, there are um, some churches that are kind of just waiting for the pandemic to end. And then we'll get going again with kind of normal church life. Uh, that, is, that is not our approach to how we want to be church during this time. And we, we have seen in so many different ways... Uh, how our church community is finding ways to live out our faith and to live out our calling in new ways as church. 
during this, this new wilderness, this unprecedented time that we're in right now. And so there are these new ways that we're being church together, which we're gathering on, on Zoom calls and we're checking in on Facebook and um, we're doing things digitally and online. And those are great, but we also are so grateful for the ways that people are being church in more old fashioned ways, like flip phone phone calls. <laughs> I or or landline, <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> landline phone calls, or just phone calls to church members to say hi. You can pick up the directory and just make a call with a few people, whether you know them or not. It, it means a lot to hear. Um, it, it means a lot to hear from people, and so we'd encourage you to 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 live out your part of this faith community by doing something like that, or sending a note to people. We have uh, some of our families and children are sending notes to. Um, uh, church members who are in care facilities, and we are just so grateful that that kind of ministry is happening right now. Just because we can't um, gather or be in the, ch- uh, in the sanctuary or the chapel, we, we still have a calling to live out our faith together, and we're grateful for the many ways that you're finding to do that during this time. And at one point, we will be an old-fashioned church again and actually gather in person. Wouldn't that be a throwback? That's going to be really cool. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. Um, and if you do need a Sunday morning donut, I believe they're making them again at the store. I saw them, So yes. you, you could pick one up there. <laughs> and you mentioned, and a cup dire- of coffee. you mentioned directories. If yes. you need a new copy of the directory, we can email that to you. So just let us know, and we'll get that out. They're, they're up to date. Every day they get updated when we get new information. So we can send that out to you by email. And you can have all that information. Can we snail mail that to people? We could do that too. We'd we rather put it in an envelope okay. and write an address and stamp it and all that stuff. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. It's time to blow out the right. candles. All right. Let's blow out the candles. Oh, this, this seems about right now. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. First try for both of us this time. I know. It only took us six weeks. I know. <laughs> We've had time to practice. <laughs>